You know, the X1C really roars when it's calibrating. It reminds me of a sound. I just can't put my finger on it. Do you hear that prehistoric-like noise? The X1 Carbon is Bamboo's flagship printer. Their words, not mine. The problem is, now everybody's suddenly an expert at 3D printing, and they made the printer too easy to use. It's full idiot proof. Gone are the days of bed leveling, the overnight spaghetti mess of filament thrown across the bed, no more calibration for flow rates, fine tuning your printer to have the perfect first layer, it's all gone. For the price of some light dental to work, you can buy the simplest user-friendly 3D printer for all ages and even genders, however many there are today. The X1 Carbon has truly changed the market and I was the only one watching all these print farms pop up overnight without any problem and they were even gas printing multicolors without even editing the g-code. What was I doing over here? Apparently, why learn all about the ins and outs of 3D printing when you can just buy a machine to take the thinking out of the operations? So what else should I do but dish out the cash and purchase the perfect printer? Well, I guess I'll see about that. So what did I have to do to get this printer up and running? Very little, my friends. I cannot say that enough. From unboxing, you just plug in the AMS to the printer, connect the Teflon tubes, load your filament, and for calibration, the machine has a menu option, and you run the program, and it will do it on its own. In a process that takes about 50 minutes, I didn't have to set no Z offset. I didn't have to level the bed. I didn't have to calibrate my flow rates. The X1C just did it all. And after you run this program, you are ready for your first print. And I made no adjustments for my first print from what the machine had calculated. Could I stump this printer and get it to produce a bad part? Legend says the X1C has never met a part it couldn't print. The filament slide was actually the first thing I printed on it. A 9 hour print straight out of the box. Not bad bamboo, but there were things that I wanted to test. And this would include the multicolor printing, the large volume prints, ASA printing without any adhesives, and printing supports in a model with the special PLA support filament. So, could I actually get a bad part out of this printer? The first idea was to use a large object that took up the entire build volume, and then I actually found a part that needed supports, so this would actually test two features I was looking at. 
I would print the model, the main portion, out of the PLA mat while I printed the supports from the PLA support material and this would involve the AMS switching seamlessly between the two materials as advertised. The model I selected was a huge daredevil helmet that I actually had to scale down to about 90% to get it to fit onto the printer's print bed and despite getting multiple error messages throughout the print, this print Hunter did not flinch. Not even Daredevil himself could defeat the X1 Carbon. AI had actually stopped three times, causing the printer to pause until you actually cleared out the error. I used one spool of filament and, on the good news, if you have another filament of the same type and color, the AMS will automatically switch over to it and begin to use that new spool. The PLA support material did good and was easily removed from the model, leaving behind what Bamboo called the flush material. Yeah, it was a lot. What about multicolor printing? This was in fact the main selling point of the X1 Carbon and every owner was quick to show off their colorful parts on Instagram. Could this printer's multicolor technology be that amazing? Like that Frank Miller's run of Daredevil? I understood that reference. Well, it did indeed live up to the hype. Remember back in episode seven, Of course you guys do. I don't even have to remind you. I had just finished installing a 3-in-1 extruder on Imprint X, my custom printer I built from scratch, and I used that printer to make some custom colorful keychains of my logo. That process was very hands-on and involved me editing and slicing together G-code, but it had worked. Well, the bamboo just crushes that and the X1 Carbon does all the work for you. Using the bamboo slicer, you can actually paint the portion of your parts you want to be a different color. And after some bamboo magic slicing, you throw it on the printer and ta-da, the same keychain.
For recap, my custom printer Imprint X was quicker at providing the keychain since no flushing of filament was involved like with the X1 Carbon when you had to change filaments. But I can't fault Bamboo there since the multicolor print looked fantastic. Also, if we're counting the large print using PLA combined with the special support material succeeded against all errors. So I was having a hard time finding anything wrong with the X1 Carbon. But now we come to the last item on my checklist. Printing ASA without any adhesives, which you've probably already guessed it. This thing had no issues at all. Man, the X1 Carbon can do anything. I can't stump it. Maybe it was indeed full idiot proof. And now a review of Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon with Mitchell. I've kept the audience in suspense long enough. How does the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon rank up amongst the other printers you can buy? I had this fun idea to make an official imprint manufacturing rankings. I think we've all seen this before. The S tier is simply the best. And then you have the F which is the heaping trash bin of failure which no man should ever waste their precious time and resources on. Got it? Good. Let's start with the only printer that belongs in the trash bin of failure which no man should ever waste their precious time and resources on and that's of course the Modix. <laughs> Following in the C category is the Ender S1 Pro, simply because it's just kind of an average printer. You know, if you're on a budget and you don't want to spend that much money, but it's a solid choice if you want some good, decent printing, but you just know it could be better, but you don't want to spend too much money. At the B level is the Quiddy, which I'm calling the Budget Bamboo. It's a great printer less expensive, and it also has less features than the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, but it's still a great printer and a little bit more pricier than the others. Then of course, you guessed it, the Bamboo X1 Carbon is simply in a league of its own. From the features, the multicolor printing, the ease of printing, truly I say to you, the greatest part about owning a Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon is not all of the amazing features I've listed or shown with the multicolor, multi-filament printing or just how easy to use this is. None of that. None of the AI monitoring, the construction of how they built this printer. It doesn't matter. The greatest part about owning a Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon is how much fun you're going to have talking smack to all your friends who are not using one. If I had to put a price on that experience of how much joy it brings me, it would be the price of one X1 Carbon 3D printer. You know what? I'll say it. I'll say it right now. I love them and love them. I don't care who knows it. Thank you all for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Leave a like, comment below, do you use the X1 Carbon printer and what has been your experience with it? I hope your 3D printing turns out awesome and if you're using a Bamboo Lab product, I know it is. I'll see you all in the next episode.